in this video we will see the application of first law of thermodynamics okay. first we will define what is heat capacity which is simply the heat required to raise the temperature of a substance by 1 degree but this heat capacity is basically of two types this heat capacity it is of two types the first one is called as superspecific heat capacity specific heat capacity okay it is basically it is the amount of amount of heat absorbed by this is very important that means by 1 gram 1 gram of a substance to raise its temperature by 1 degree centigrade ok that means you can simply define this the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a 1 gram of a substance through 1 degree centigrade this is very important here what you have to consider you have to take only 1 gram you will take 1 gram of a substance suppose and what amount of heat you will require so that the temperature of this substance increases through 1 degree centigrade suppose it was already at 15 degree you can say 15 degree so its temperature should uh, rise to 16 degree centigrade when the temperature of this substance reaches to 16 degree centigrade that means from 15 to 16 that means through 1 degree we have to calculate what amount of heat we have given to this system ok so this is basically the amount of heat you can say now the absorbed by this system ok so this will be called as superspecific heat capacity ok the we can mathematically show this equation simply by suppose this amount of heat we have supplied 
or this amount of heat absorbed it is first directly proportional to you can say the change in temperature T2 suppose the final temperature is T2 the initial is T1 and directly proportional to mass okay or you can put simply a constant here this superspic this is C superspic heat capacity you can write it M is simply the mass of that substance T2 minus T1 or you can now define this superspic heat capacity C by simply Q upon M T2 minus T1 ok now we will see one more type of this that is called as molar heat capacity simple definition will be it is the amount of amount of heat absorbed by now if we are talking about molar then we will take one mole ok absorbed by one mole of a substance to raise its temperature by 1 degree centigrade so this will be molar heat capacity now we can define the molar heat capacity by this mathematical equation also suppose this is the heat capacity this specific heat capacity if we take Q upon suppose n is the number of moles E2 minus T1 and what you can do you can simply multiply this take this n here it will be Q upon T2 minus T1 or this is simply called as molar heat capacity Cm Q upon T2 minus T1 or you can sometimes this is simply written as C is equal to the in terms of very very small amount of heat that means dq upon dt also ok now from first law of thermodynamics what we have is dq or you can write it as change in internal energy is basically equal to dq plus dw or you can write it as du is equal to dq if this is a pressure volume work you can write it as minus pd ok in place of this now we can rearrange this we can take dq this side it will be du plus pd if we put this value dq into this equation so we will get 
therefore this c will be simply equal to tu plus pdv upon dt okay now we can take different conditions suppose at constant constant volume if v is constant that means the differential of v dv will be simply equal to zero so if we take this equation into consideration and put these conditions one by one suppose first condition is at constant volume so this part will be obviously equal to zero so I can from this equation suppose this is equation star uh, you can write C is equal to du upon dt okay now at what we have kept to what constant volume so we will write this right at constant volume so this is written as in this form also that means the specific heat capacity at constant volume so this will be the simple relation we can generate from equation star now if we take one more condition suppose condition number second we will insert here at constant pressure we know at constant pressure that heat supplied at constant pressure dq at constant pressure will be equal to simply the change in enthalpy okay this is the small amount of heat absorbed at constant pressure this will be simply equal to small change in enthalpy that means the dh so as per the first law of thermodynamics in place of dq we can write dh is equal to change in internal energy plus pd okay so we can simply write therefore in place of this du plus pdv we can simply put the value dh okay so c will be simply equal to dh upon dt what we have done we have simply inserted the value of dh from this equation into equation star okay that means in place of du plus pdv you will simply insert the dh value okay but this will be at constant pressure so we will write cp constant pressure so these are the two equations very very important equations you have to remember that how this specific heat capacity heat capacity at constant volume and heat capacity at constant pressure are related to internal energy and the enthalpy okay now there are various relations various CP minus CV relation okay. 
the simple relation you know between CP and CV is that suppose if we take the first one that you know this from 11th class CP minus CV is equal to R but this is for for ideal gas ok this is for ideal gas situation the second one you can have CP minus CV is equal to T dou P this will be the partial derivative dou T upon V multiplied by dou V upon dou T at constant pressure ok one more e relation you can have CP minus CV is equal to R into 1 plus twice A upon R T V. Okay, but this will be for real gas. These questions have been asked directly in the CSR net how CP minus CV is related to for an ideal gas is very simple but for real gases that has been asked okay. or one more relation is that this CP minus CV is related to alpha square TV upon beta ok uh, in the preceding videos you will see these relations and we can derive some of them so please try to remember these at this point then we can define the related terms in these equations okay thank you